chairperson of the AL LCIF, Douglas X. Alexander, immediate past international president also. It is an honor for me to stand up here and be called upon to introduce you because we haven't had LCIF chair visiting Thailand for several years. Perhaps due to the COVID and the other difficulties in the past. But this year we are fortunate that we have you. So you are most very, very warm welcome to Thailand. Now, Douglas, I know all these 11 months and a half, you have been listening about your own story. Who are you? So you don't need to hear that one more time here. Because I like to try to do it in Thai, in my own language. So my people here, the lines would understand you better. So with your permission, may I do it in Thai? Oh, thank you, Dr. ครับผมขออนุญาตท่านประธานแนวซีไอเอฟแล้วว่าอยากจะแนะนําท่านเป็นภาษาไทยผมจะพูดภาษาอังกฤษเด็กท่านบอกท่านฟังมาตลอดเ
นะรางวัลที่เป็นวันที่เราจะมีความสุขใจกันทุกคนเลยนะครับดังนั้นผมอยากให้ท่านพบกับท่านประธาน LCA ของเราดักเตอร์อเล็กซานเดอร์นะตอนนี้เขาอาจจะไม่พูดไทยกันท่านนะครับผมต้องพูดภาษาอังกฤษแต่ยูฮะนะ I introduce you in Thai I hope you got it all you got it all right okay thank you very much <laughs> good evening good evening protocol has already been established but I must say uh, Hello to my good friend, past international president, KJ. Thank you for that introduction. I hope you said nice things about me. <laughs> also to my classmate, PK, and to past international director, Lo. It is good to be back in Thailand, be it 15 years since I was last year, 2008, when we had the international president, Albert Dell, from New York. Came here, came in at the convention here. Lions, our motto is simply we serve. We look for that opportunity to make a difference in the lives of those less fortunate. And you're doing that here in Thailand. But not only in Thailand, you're making that possible all around the world through your support of our foundation, LCIF. I often say when I visit areas and talk with lions, I hope that we are having a good experience as lions, and that we are happy in the service that we're providing to the people in our community and the world. Happy members don't leave. We need to make sure that our members are given an opportunity to serve our association as well as to serve the public. That is part of member satisfaction, and we want to make sure that our members are feeling welcomed needed and wanted, and that they're developing in our organization. They're getting that opportunity to become future leaders of our association. That is so important to the success of our organization and the future of our organization. Membership has been very dear to my heart from day one. We're at 1.4 million members. You will hear more about something called Mission 1.5 at our international convention in Boston in July. Our executive officers have come up with a process that they believe will help us achieve 1.5 million members, thus Mission 1.5. We will have four years to reach this goal. It will be spearheaded by our executive officers starting with our incoming president, Dr. Patty Hill, and the three vice presidents. The eight constitutional areas will be split up among the three vice presidents, which shows you the importance and the focus they are, they are putting on membership growth. When you think about the world population, almost eight billion people, and we have 1.4 million members in more than 200 countries and geographical areas, that is such a small number of our population. So we know that there's plenty of room for growth for our organization, but it's gonna take a focus on growing membership to make that happen. And you know, it sounds very simple. It all begins with an ask. We have to ask people to become a part of our great association. I was recently in Kenya and we had the, a, we were there for the Lions Day with the United Nations. And we had the governor from Kenya and a governor from Maryland put together a worldwide week of service. There were more than 30 service projects. There was a gentleman there from Special Olympics. He'd been working with Special Olympics for 10 years. His name is Charles. We all had our best on because we were all excited about the service that we were going to be able to do. And I noticed that he was not wearing a vest. And I had an extra vest with me, so I offered to give him the vest. And he said to me, I'm not a lion. Now he's been working with Special Olympics for 10 years, and he said to me, no one has ever asked me to join. So I said, well, I'm asking you to join right now. He was so excited about the opportunity. Our international president, Brian Sheehan, 
swore him into Zionism. When I landed in Kenya, that was right after the earthquake in uh, Turkey and Syria. And I said, you know, I think we can raise some funds here to help the people of Turkey and Syria. So I set a goal of $100,000. We actually raised $150,000. And this young man was one of the people who raised his hand to donate $1,000, a brand new lion. And it all began with an ask. So we must remember to ask people to join our great association. My theme when I was a district governor was each one bring one. Just imagine if each line committed to finding one person that they could bring into this great association. 1.4 becomes 2.8. With more hands, we can provide more service. Now our foundation supports us in all of the grants that are distributed. And since 1968, more than 19,000 grants have been distributed, totaling 1.2 billion US dollars. We just saw on the screen the support the foundation has given the people of Thailand in some very difficult times. And I know that you appreciate the support of our foundation. I know that the citizens appreciate our foundation. But in order for our foundation to continue to be there, when disasters arise around the world, we must continue to support our foundation. You know, we completed our most ambitious campaign ever, Campaign 100, with the goal to raise $300 million. Well, we celebrated at our international convention last year in Montreal with the final tally of $325 million. Yes, give yourself a hand. And that was all made possible because of lions like you and your support of the foundation. You know, you're part of Constitutional Area 5, OSEAL. If you look at the donations that come into the foundation, OSEAL is number one and donating to our foundation. More than 50% of that $325 million came out of OSEAL. And I want you to know that we are very appreciative of your support of our foundation. I was so excited when I was able to schedule my visit to come to Thailand, and I just recently left Taiwan. Back in the latter part of last year, I got to go to Korea and Japan to say thank you to the Lions and to see the wonderful projects that they are doing with help from the funds of our foundation. You know, the United Nations has predicted that disasters around the world will increase by 40%. And as we watch the news every day, you can see, you hear about flooding, the fires, the tornadoes, and the earthquakes that are happening. Vines are always there on the radio. When the earthquake hit Turkey and Syria, that very first day, we approved a $200,000 major catastrophe grant to help the people there. And since we approved another grant for $360,000 for them to purchase containers, which will serve as temporary residents for more than 45 families, for more than 200 people, these are just some of the things that Lions are able to do through the support of our foundation. And we want to make sure that our foundation will be there for years and decades to come. And that will only be possible by our continued support of the foundation. And you know, we must tell our story. We have to share the great work that our foundation does in supporting us in the projects that we have and when disasters strike around the world. We as Lions can be proud of the work that we do. This world is a better place because of each and every one of you and the support that you give our foundation and to your individual communities. Often clubs are able to manage projects without the support of our foundation, but it speaks to who Lions are around the world. I was in Kenya and during that same time, well actually my first visit to Kenya was in August of last year. 
And I went to an auditorium where all the Lions Clubs were displaying the different projects that they were doing. A mother came with her little two-year-old daughter who was born, born missing a foot. And it really touched my heart to see this beautiful little girl. There was a club that, that did prosthetics, the artificial limbs. And when they put on this foot to this young girl, if you could have seen how she took off running around the room, and it just changed that sadness to joy to see that she was just like any other child through the support of a Lions Club. That's what Lions do every day around the world. We truly make a difference in people's lives. So we are all a part of something that is greater than ourselves, And that is the service that we're able to provide to those in need. We must always remember our focus is we serve. We do this not to be served. We do this to serve those in need around the world. So I want to thank you for this opportunity to join you here. Thank you for this lovely dinner in my honor. It's so great to see old friends and to make new friends. That's one of the other great things about being in an organization such as ours. We get to travel around the world to see the world and to see the work that you're doing in your communities and to make those friendships that will last a lifetime. We don't have to see each other every day or every week, but when we get together, we celebrate, just like seeing my good friend, PK, who I hadn't seen in a number of years. It is so great to see you here. Looking well. Thank you. Thank you all for all you do. Thank you again for having me here. Let's continue to serve. Serve with safety. Serve with kindness because it truly matters. And the thing our international president this year, Brian Sheehan, together we can and together we will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.